The best graphics cards are the beating heart of any gaming PC, and everything else comes second. Without a powerful GPU pushing pixels, even the fastest CPU won't manage much. While no one graphics card will be right for everyone, we'll provide options for every budget and mindset below. Whether you're after the fastest graphics card, the best value, or the best card at a given price, we've got you covered. Though you will find hundreds or even thousands of them in the market, here are the top 6 best graphics cards, you will know why they are best after you watch the whole video about them. So let's get started. And don't forget to check the product link in the description. Number 1. GeForce RTX 3080. The visual design of the two-slot, 10.5-inch long NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 Founders Edition is modern, elegant, and almost completely devoid of the kind of gamers' accents that have plagued the component industry for too many years. The RTX 3080 Founders card looks like that kid from middle school who stopped bleaching his tips, gelling his hair, and wearing skate shoes to Thanksgiving. That would be the angular cooling system and black on silver color palette. Of course, third-party card makers will take some different approaches, and not all will conform to the Founders Edition's unique design, which has a fan on top of the card, as well as a fan on its bottom. Two strips of LEDs line the card in total one that accents the upward-facing fan, and another underneath the GeForce RTX 3080 badge on the side of the card. Other than that, the card's brushed metal casing is interrupted by little else. Of all the reference GPU designs I've seen over the decades, this is by far the most grown-up looking of the bunch. The card is simultaneously professional and intimidating, a hard balance to hit when you're swimming in the world of industrial design and also trying to keep esports types happy. If you're a current 4K gamer, NVIDIA's ferocious, field-redefining GeForce RTX 3080 graphics card is the only one worth considering. To this, NVIDIA has several counters. The first is that in traditional PCB cooling approaches, a significant portion of the heat is already dumped into the GPU's backplate, which sits right next to the CPU cooler, anyway. Number 2. GeForce GTX 1660. The GeForce GTX 1660 is based on the same 12 nanometers fabrication process and Turing architecture that powers the RTX line of cards. The primary difference, at the architectural level, is the lack of tensor or ray tracing cores that set RTX cards apart from their GTX predecessors. The GTX 1660 strips away those cost-boosting bits of the RTX cards while keeping most of the benefits that make the Turing architecture so robust. Its reduced die size, increased transistor count, and low power requirements make the GTX 1660 a reasonable alternative to pricier RTX cards and obvious upgrades to the previous GTX 1060 and GTX 1070 line. Nvidia has been winning for a while and winning a lot. Whether it's sending AMD's Radeon cards to the cleaners with regularity in benchmarking face-offs, seeing its stock price increase 10 times over in two years, or leading the charge on bleeding-edge tech like real-time ray tracing, for a while it seemed that NVIDIA was an unstoppable silicon juggernaut. With a line of pricey graphics cards on the market that perform like champs, market resetting cost, NVIDIA quickly found itself in a position where it needed a card with a more common touch. Enter the GTX 1660. MSI's GeForce GTX 1660 Gaming X 6G is exceptional at doing what it's designed to do delivering a moderate-cost GPU option to gamers in search of high refresh rates in 1080p. Number 3. Radeon RX 6600 XT. In keeping with that trend, the Radeon RX 6600 debuts today, with a host of third-party cards based on the GPU. If you want a GPU that can more easily make the jump from high detail 1080p to 1440p play, cards based on AMD's Radeon RX 6600 XT or Nvidia's GeForce RTX 3060 make better financial sense. That said, if you're fond of older game titles, AMD's drivers remain a core shortfall for the RX 6600 and its XT-badged bigger sibling. 
Gamers who play a lot of legacy titles that use older versions of Microsoft DirectX should consider competing NVIDIA options instead if they can find them. Looking at current generation GPUs, the Radeon RX 6600's key competitor is clearly the GeForce RTX 3060. Each has its own strengths. Between the two, the Radeon RX 6600 wins outright when it comes to a power draw. As a result, those on the hunt for a lower power, smaller footprint card won't be disappointed in what the XFX card scene here has to offer. The XFX Speedster SWFT 210 card we have in hand is one of a host of third-party designs based on AMD's Radeon RX 6600 GPU. The XFX model we tested features 8GB of GDDR6 video memory, which looks dead on when stacked against NVIDIA's MSRP GeForce RTX 3060. Let's see how everything else shakes out between these GPUs. The XFX Speedster SWFT210, based on AMD's mid-range Radeon RX 6600 GPU, is an able enough 1080p gaming card, but SOSO cooling and performance with older games add shine to Nvidia's competing RTX 3060 and AMD's older GPUs. Number 4. Radeon RX 6800 XT. The first thing about the AMD Radeon RX 6800 XT as the box was just how big it was. Now, at 10.5 inches long, it's actually the same length as its nemesis, NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 3080 Founders Edition. The 2.5 slot width and the sheer weight remind you that this is a top-end, big iron GPU. The AMD Radeon RX 6800 XT slims down its port offerings from previous AMD cards, offering up two DisplayPort 1.4B ports, one HDMI output, and one USB Type-C output all told. Like the 30 series, that HDMI output has been upgraded to the HDMI 2.1 spec, up from 2.0 in previous RDNA cards. On the back of the card, we find a die-cast aluminum backplate, which is the same material found throughout the construction of the rest of the card, including the shroud and the frame. The reference model of the AMD Radeon RX 6800 XT uses three fans in a push-pull configuration, which draws in heat from the bottom of your case, passes it along the aluminum heatsink, and expels waste heat through the backplate as well as through vents on the side and rear port of the card. AMD's Radeon RX 6800 XT impresses in spots with record-breaking results in specific benchmarks and driver stability issues, keeping it from toppling the best of NVIDIA's GeForce RTX. Number 5. Piney GTX 1650. The punchy PNY GTX 1650 Super is markedly better than the non-Super GTX 1650 and is a solid mainstream GPU. It gives budget-focused, 1080p gamers a better option against competing for AMD cards in the same price bracket. The original GeForce GTX 1650 launch was, at best, uninspiring. The card was met on the whole with a lukewarm reception by review sites for having meager overclocking potential, being a little overpriced versus relevant AMD Radeon cards, and, most important, posting speed results behind the curve at its price. The GTX 1650 Super starts at, while the base models of the standard GTX 1650 retail for. Most third-party versions of the card go for anywhere above that. Now, however, Nvidia could be changing the narrative around the GTX 1650 line and doing what it's done best all throughout 2019 Super ING it, a verb we've now coined simply out of convenience since so many GeForce cards are getting the same treatment. In essence, the Super cards are ticked up or ticked down versions of existing GeForce Touring. Most of the Super cards in the GeForce RTX line reflect their origins by being a card one step down in the GeForce family naming scheme from the one it takes its die from. The GeForce RTX 2070 Super is just a downbend GeForce RTX 2080, for example. The GTX 1650 Super follows that model and tellingly shares quite a few specs with the card in the GeForce line right above it, the GeForce GTX 1660. Number 6. GeForce RTX 3050 XC. The GeForce RTX 3050 is a solid desktop GPU, launching today, starts with cards at an ostensible list price, 
and it's the new GPU that has impressed US. We tested it in the form of EVGA's GeForce RTX 3050XC Black Gaming 8G, one of a host of RTX 3050 cards launching today. This was before the full effects of the current crypto craze and the pandemic put a squeeze on GPU supply up and down the market. Of course, list prices are just a pipe dream these days, in graphics card land. The RTX 2060 Founders Edition runs between and, depending on the seller and the number of bids. At least on paper, that would make the MSRP of the new EVGA GeForce RTX 3050 XC Black Gaming 8G a steal. Whether you can find one at that price from a first-party seller is another matter. Things have gotten so constrained on the supply side that even the RTX 3050 spiritual predecessor, the GTX 1650, was recently released back onto the market in an effort by ASUS to add to the available stock. The GeForce RTX 3050 is a strong junior entry into NVIDIA's peerless lineup of Ampere-powered RTX 30 series GPUs, and this EVGA XC Black card is a corker for 1080p play at a near-budget price.